Hey everyone, this is Dave from the Adobe Video Team, and today I'm so excited to share with you Adobe Firefly Generate Video. Uh, it's out in beta starting today, and it's a new AI tool that's gonna allow you to type in a prompt, use a source image if you want, and have that generate a short video. It is magical, it is super cool, and I've had a lot of fun just experimenting with it, uh, using the workflows and products that I'm already using and kind of mixing the two together. So that's what this video tutorial is gonna be about. We're gonna start going over an overview with some of the basics of uh, how to write a prompt and use source images and all of that stuff, and then dig into the fun stuff, like bringing my kids' stuffed animals to life, or stitching together multiple clips to create a longer shot, uh, taking vacation photos and faking a drone shot based off of that sort of stuff, um, taking a logo or brand or title sequence or something like that and using motion graphics and animation to turn that into uh, an animated sequence. We'll also experiment with some 2D stuff, so taking some drawings and characters and animated elements that I've done, and then animating them with Generate Video and compositing them together and stuff like After Effects to create cool stuff. I'll also show a video game concept trailer that I did about a cyberpunk samurai, and then finish everything off with a short film uh, based off of a cute little robot in a futuristic city. So if that sounds good to you, let's get started. All right, so to get started, I'm gonna to go to firefly.adobe.com and I'm gonna scroll down until I see Generate Video Beta and I'm gonna go ahead and click Generate there. Now, if you've used other Firefly tools like text to image or anything like that, uh, the interface should look pretty similar and it's really easy to use. All you do is type something down here. So let's say a tropical beach with palm trees and a clear blue sky. And then I go ahead and click on generate and it's going to render out that video. It's gonna take about 30 seconds to a minute depending on uh, the complexity and how many people are using it and all that stuff, but you'll get a little loader indication here. I've already done this previously, so I uh, tried this prompt earlier and this is what I got. So what I get is a five second video based off of the prompt that I wrote, and it's going to be 16 by nine aspect ratio, 24 FPS, um, and it's gonna be 1280 by 720 resolution. So this is really cool. I can just type whatever I want and have it show up. Let's try, for example, a coffee cup. A coffee mug in the middle of an office desk, photorealistic cinematic camera slowly rotates around it. So something like this. Now I could of course edit and add some more thing, like I want you know steam rising out of it, or I want a person walking in the background, or I want it to be nighttime, or I want it to be a home office versus a modern uh, corporate office. You can kind of play around with these keywords and try generating different things. So a lot of times I will start with an initial prompt and then change one or two words or add something and continually uh, do more iterations until I get exactly what I'm looking for. This can be really great for B-roll or establishing shots for videos if you wanted to add something in. So if I was doing a piece about San Francisco, for example, and I wanted to add something in, I could do this shot of the Golden Gate Bridge. I said it's sunset, you know, cinematic lighting, all of that sort of stuff, and you can have that sort of thing. Um, it's not just photorealistic stuff, though. Of course, you can, you know, describe other types of things as well. So here's an adorable puppy sitting on a platform. Um, and you get kind of this nice, you know, 3D rendered uh, style look instead. And then just changing the word puppy to kitten, I'm gonna get something like this. Now, it's important to know that you've got, you know, a few different controls at your disposal over here on the left-hand side. So I could choose, for example, my shot size if I want some close up or really long, you know, far away. If I want different camera angles, uh, you know, specifically how you want your ca camera to be, or different types of motion, a zoom in and out, a tilt, all of that sort of stuff. So sometimes I don't even use these, I just type in the camera controls down here uh, that I want, you know, the camera slowly rotating left to right or something like that. Um, but you do have options over here if you want them as well. So I'd say do whatever you feel comfortable with. If you aren't really familiar with filming and cinematography and stuff like that, you can definitely use these as a guide to help you get started.
Another thing down here is the seed. Basically, if the seed number is the same between your prompts, you're gonna get things in a similar style, which means that's the reason why this dog and this cat kind of look like they're in the same universe, the same world, right? And if I change that seed to a completely different number, I might get slightly different results. So keeping the same seed is a great way to keep your results a little bit more consistent. But let's face it, typing in a text prompt, you're kind of rolling the dice. It's a black box, it's a slot machine. You cross your fingers and hope you get something you like, but sometimes it's not gonna work out and you have to continually iterate. That's why the single best feature for Generate Video is this right here, image upload. Basically, you can set what you want the first frame of your video to look like, and then Generate Video is going to take that and create the scene based off of your composition. This is the most powerful part of Generate Video, in my opinion, and something I use probably 85% of the time when I'm making videos. So a really common workflow that I'll do is start in Firefly text to image and uh, generate exactly what I'm looking for. And that gives me a little bit more control over the composition of the characters, of the environment, the colors, all of that stuff. I could bring this into Photoshop if I wanted. I could composite multiple things together, all sorts of opportunities here. And then I can take that image over into uh, Firefly, uh, generate video, and I get a video like this. And I just type in the prompt of what I want the motion to be. So I say in this case, you know, I wanted the fish to swim, start to swim down. It's photorealistic. The camera zooms out to reveal kind of a colorful uh, riverbed uh, type of thing. And so this is a really cool way to get more precise results of what you're looking for. All right, so that's an overview of how Generate Video works, but let's start to dig into some experiments that I've been trying out uh, with some existing tools and workflows and how I can kind of merge everything together to create cool new stuff. That includes uh, taking photos of my kids' stuffed animals and trying to bring them to life. So here I took a picture of my daughter's little lammy. We're gonna go ahead and Photoshop here and select subject. That's gonna give us our uh, outline of our character. I shot her on a solid uh, colored background. I'm gonna do the inverse and press delete. And now I've got lammy ready to go. I'm gonna cut her out of this document, put her in another. I've already generated a background that I wanted her to be in using uh, Photoshop's uh, generative tools. And then I'm just gonna paste her in here. Let's make her the right size and stuff. And then of course I could, you know, change the coloring and everything to get all the levels just right so it feels like she fits into this environment in, you know, the best possible way. So here's some of the results I got. Here's Cauliflower the Pesky Penguin. Uh, looking around in uh, her ice kingdom. Then we've got little Lammy uh, in kind of this fantasy you know, field with the clouds moving. Again, I took the initial photo and composition and then changed the prompt to say I wanted to zoom out and have the flowers and grass you know, blowing and the clouds moving. So one image can do quite a lot of different variations and you just have to play around with it and see what you get. Here we've got Red Monster. Uh, this guy, character animator mascot, and uh, zooms in straight into his nose and kind of this treehouse village. I like this shot actually if you actually reverse it and it kind of reveals Ren Monster a little bit better. I think that's a, a slightly better shot. So you can of course do stuff like that. And then my personal favorite is this one. This is Piccadilly the bunny walking through a uh, crystal, a uh, rainbow crystal cave. So we got Piccadilly as a souvenir in London. Um, she's made by Jelly Cat, the same people that made uh, Little Lammy. And uh, it's just so cool. Uh, my kids were just amazed to see their characters come to life. So this is a really fun thing to try. If you've got uh, you know, stuffed animals or toys or objects or whatever, and you wanna see them come to life, take a photo, composite them in the background in Photoshop, and try a prop prompt and generate video and see what happens. Now, you shouldn't feel limited by the five second uh, rule for uh, Firefly Generate Video, generating only five seconds of video at a time because there's a trick around this. You could take your last frame of your video, use that as the source image for your next video, and then continue the process. Now, there's a few tricks you're gonna have to do to make it feel very seamless, um, but, but what you can do is just continually add clips over and over again until you've got much longer sequences. So here I've got this sequence. I started with this image um, and then brought it into Premiere Pro and uh, 
took multiple videos that I downloaded and generated from uh, Firefly Generate video and just kind of kept zooming out and saying, okay, now I wanted to see like a treehouse village. And then, okay, keep zooming out and I want to see like a Red Rock Canyon. Um, and then eventually we get to into snow and stuff like that. So just this continual process. Now you notice I did some speed ramping down here um, because at the end of the camera zooms, it kind of naturally eases in and out. And I wanted to kind of make it feel a little bit more continuous. So um, you have options like that. So taking that shot earlier with Piccadilly walking through the cave, uh, here she started and you'll see I stitched right there. She starts walking towards the camera, uh, kind of blurs and gets out of the way. And then I wanted to zoom out of the cave and show uh, this kind of, you know, illuminated world that she's living in. So there's a lot of really cool storytelling possibilities when you stitch uh, multiple shots together. Another thing, of course, you can use as your source image is your own photos, like vacation photos, for example. And one of the most effective techniques that I've found at using a generate video is to basically make fake drone shots. So the way you would do this is start with whatever you want your source image to be of some shot, and then in the prompt, you say basically zoom out and reveal more of the landscape. And it's kind of a cool way to bring these photos to life. So here I took a photo of my son in an inflatable uh, um, a unicorn at Lake Tahoe. And I said, you know, in the prompt, zoom out quickly and show more of the lake and sky and got something like this. So it's pretty cool to be able to, you know, just see more and, and try this, you know, different type of technique and environment. And um, I tried this with a bunch of photos. So I tried this photo of my kids at Joshua Tree. They were standing on these rocks and it zoomed out and showed more of this, you know, Rocky Canyon environment. Very dramatic. Um, if you change a few words, you can get very different results, right? So if I said it was a Rocky Canyon, I kind of get this. If I said Red and Brown Canyon, I get this kind of treatment. And then finally, Rocky Rocky Hills is more of a, a little bit different environment and a little flatter. So you can try different things in your prompt to say what you want the rest of the environment to look like. Um, so that might include different geographical things like uh, I want a, you know, a river uh, in front of it or I want, you know, this um, this long walkway, a deck in a forest or a fence in the foreground. You can have all these different options uh, as well. Another cool effect is you could reverse it and basically start with the drone shot and then zoom in to get to that final shot. So here are my kids again at Joshua Tree. They were in these caves and uh, I basically added this, you know, additional drone shot kind of zooming in and pretending that that was what uh, got them there. This is also great for title sequences. If you're looking for like a title for your vacation video, um, this is a really great way to go is adding it, um, you know, zooming out in the environment and then being able to add the typography in and something like Premiere or After Effects or something like that. So play around with your photos, see what's possible. Um, it's a really cool way to kind of bring them to life. One thing that actually worked surprisingly well has been creating title sequences using um, uh, Generate Video. So here's something I did for OK Samurai. So I made these uh, neon letters and then had it zoom in in this warehouse and has it glow and the URL appears at the bottom. I added that later in After Effects and then this flicker and uh, leak out. So. This is, um, you know, I basically started with this, uh, actually this image right here, something like this. And then I basically stitched two videos together to create this animated title sequence. Now, if you've ever tried to tell AI to type out specific words, so if I want OK Samurai and Neon Lights, you probably get results that look more like this, right? Uh, where it doesn't quite get it all right. AI is not quite there yet. So for more consistent results, the best way to start is to actually create it yourself in Photoshop. And um, I took these from text to image and used these as kind of my starting letters and then composited everything together in Photoshop. So in this case, I don't even think text to image got samurai completely right. So I ended up having to, um, you know, like take the, step part of the M and then move it over here and change the coloring slightly to get that to be the I. Um, so if you know your way around Photoshop, this will be a little bit easier. But then I composited the scene exactly like I wanted with the background, the concrete and all of that and then told what I wanted the shot to do. So in this case, I'm actually reversing this shot because it actually started here and then I had it zoom out and then I reversed it and then stitched it with another one where it actually flickers and uh, does this sort of thing. 
So uh, combining multiple shots together, you can get kind of a nice, uh, you know, like here's my intro and then here's my outro and focus on two different generate video parts and then combine them together to create a cool title sequence. Now, another really cool thing about titles is that one hero shot, so whatever that perfect frame is that you have of your logo on a specific background or whatever, it can lead to so many different possibilities depending on what you type into the generate video prompt. So here I took, uh, we, I'm part of a local theater company here in California called Royal Theater Academy and put their logo on top of a red curtain background and then tried a few different prompts and basically got very different results based on what I wrote. So this top one, we got kind of a dreamy bokeh look. I think I said, you know, zoom out slowly and reveal the rest of the theater. Um, the second one has the curtains actually open up and reveal kind of this fantasy landscape with a castle and rainbows. And then finally, the bottom one, it reveals, zooms out and shows a cheering crowd. So all of these are, you know, very different shots and they all started with the same thing. So you can play around with this and try all sorts of different things. And uh, it's just a lot of fun to experiment, experiment with. And it leads to a lot of cool possibilities, right? If you want to do holiday themes. So here's the Halloween version of our logo reveal. Here's the holiday version. Here's the, um, you know, one that reveals, you can make a transition into a green screen and have that reveal something else. Um, all sorts of really cool, creative possibilities that you can do here. So I encourage you to spend the time on that hero shot, get that just right, and then go crazy playing with it and generate video. And I think you'll get some really cool results. Now, if you've watched this channel before, you know I love drawing tree houses and robots and monsters and all that stuff. And so you know I had to bring those things into generate video to see what happens. And uh, one of the things I like is taking, merging uh, the drawings I've done, usually in Adobe Fresco on an iPad Pro, and then using the image as a source image for generate video. And that can lead to kind of a nice intro and outro for your illustrations when you're sharing it on social media. So time-lapse uh, is something that Fresco has had for a long time where you can always see kind of this time-lapse version of your creation and you kind of see how it was created. So in this case, I drew this, you know, tree house with all these different things inside of it. I showed the time-lapse and then I used that as my source image and ended up with something like this at the end. So it's kind of a cool way to, you know, again, have this intro and this outro showcase your illustration and to do some, some kind of fun thing there. Um, some other experiments I've done are Red Monster. So here we have a drawing. I tried like an oil painting uh, style for him. And then I wanted him to like melt into a puddle in the ground basically. And so I tried that and that works pretty well. This is one of my favorites. I really like how that one turned out. Um, and then even like a really simple illustration. So like this is a, you know, pretty simple thing. I just, I probably did in like five minutes, uh, if that, uh, creating this character, again, using Fresco. And then what I did was I actually motion tracked uh, the time, the drawing with the video to kind of have it move and, and build a little bit as it creates. So even something simple like this can lead to some really cool dimension and depth and stuff. You see how the character's kind of moving forward, the sun kind of shows up, all of that sort of stuff um, is a cool way. So I could see like taking a kid's drawing, for example, and bringing it to life um, in this way as well. Keeping with simple illustrated characters, here is a frog that I drew, again, very quickly in fresco and then told the prompt to have him jump into a lake with a splash and got an effect like that. So it doesn't have to be a very detailed drawing. It could be something, you know, kind of fun and quick and then just play around with it and bring it to life. Here's some penguins that I drew. I wanted to have them waddle around uh, and kind of move towards the camera kind of in a goofy way. Uh, it kind of keeps that watercolor boundary, which is kind of cool. A third one shows up over here as well. These guys are kind of merging together, but it's okay. They're, they're kind of these goofy illustrated guys um, and it's just fun to see them come to life. One fun thing you could try is taking a mouth that you've done in Adobe Character Animator with the live lip sync and all of that, and then composite that over top of your character. So if you start your character with like a small mouth or like a dot or something like that, that you can motion track in After Effects, then you could composite a mouth over top of it and kind of combine a lip syncing mouth with a talking character. And so this could lead to some cool creative possibilities uh, as well. 
As part of the character animator team, I have always loved making cartoons and animations and stuff like that. And I think Generate Video is really exciting for this type of stuff. So um, I've been trying to draw things and bring them to life using Generate Video as kind of atmospheric elements. So for example, this is a torch that I drew. Um, the initial image was this initial frame here um, that I drew in uh, Fresco and drew the torch bottom here and, and the flame up top and then added a green background behind it so I could green screen it into whatever environment I wanted to, right? Um, so that was one option. I think this was another one. Um, if I just did the fire by itself, uh, a lot of times it would just start to like float off into the air. I thought it was a rocket ship or something like that. And you see there's all these extra sparks and stuff like that. So I felt like I had to ground these effects sometimes. And so I just put like this green box underneath it that I'd be able to key out later in After Effects or something like that. Then I also made these other atmospheric effects. Um, I think I started with a text to image uh, version of cloud for this and then said, I want, you know, want the clouds to go left to right and then use this as a atmospheric element. Again, using a black background so I could use a linear dodge blend or something like that in After Effects or video editing software to let me add it to my scene. Same thing with like these dust particles as well. Um, I have, you know, want to give a little bit of stuff in the air to give it some dynamic feeling right? You can even do light leaks as well. Try some different, you know, light leak techniques to make some glare and flares and stuff like that as the camera moves to give it a little bit of, you know, extra dynamic qualities. So you take all that stuff and composite it together in After Effects. I made a character walking into this scene in Adobe Character Animator and then put it all together and you get something like this. So before I had these different elements, this was a pretty stale room, right? She just walks into a room, there's not much going on. But then I added, you know, the, the clouds at the bottom, the dust particles in the air, this light leak that appears right there, um, the fire, the flame that's in the style of fire that I drew. All these things together help bring this otherwise stale and, uh, you know, r basic room to life. Um, and yeah, there's some dumb After Effects tricks. I've got her shadow back here. I've got the grass moving with the puppet pin tool and things like that. But I think this is the really cool part is combining the stuff you already do um, with some of this generate video stuff to help you liven up some different elements. Um, it can lead to some really exciting results. Here's another example I did. I started with a uh, fiery explosion that I started with uh, drawing how this looked and then generated video to make that into a transition. Really cool to use generate video to create these kind of animated transitions. And it reveals everyone's favorite robot detective, Evan Flamethrower, uh, showing up. And he's going to make his flamethrower show up. And there we go, there's the title. Um, and this was really fun to put together. Um, you see I used the explosion effect again there to bring out the uh, metal logo. But um, the way I did this flame is, again, I drew a you know large flame uh, in a generate video uh, in Fresco first, actually, on a green screen background, generated video with you know fluid, uh, you know saying a flame with fluid motion, cartoon 2D animated style, and then I duplicated it, put a layer over top of it, did an add blend mode to kind of get this glowing look, um, which is a you know common After Effects trick that we'll use all the time. All these glowing lights and stuff like that are also the same kind of technique. And you get this really cool, you know, unique flame that's uh, based off of something that I drew. So it's a really fun element to add into your creations like this. And of course, you're not limited to 2D uh, worlds. You can have bring those elements into your own uh, dumb experiments at home. Playing around with Firefly Generate Video has opened up some new storytelling possibilities for me. Um, so in the past, if you'd asked me, hey Dave, can you make a fake video game trailer? I would have said, uh, maybe I could fake something out with like 2D pixel art, side scrolling type stuff, but nothing that was like full 3D. I am not a 3D modeler. I don't know the first thing about 3D. I made a you know spinning cube in 3D Studio Max back when I was in college, but since then 3D has always been really complex and it's not something that's in my current skill set, right? So here's a video game concept trailer that I made. It's by no means perfect. Obviously, if I actually knew how to do 3D stuff, it would look way cooler. But for a conceptual experiment, I think it worked pretty well. I started with this image that I made in text to image uh, for a cyberpunk samurai and then stitched things together and created this.
So I'm not gonna lie, this took a lot of shots and attempts to get right. Um, so again, I started with, I think, this shot here, and then I had it zoom in to show the visor, and I reversed that to get this particular image. I added this fake video game company name and After Effects, have it zoom around. So this was another prompt where I said, you know, rotate around and reveal the characters back inside a futuristic workshop. Um, added in this Souls-like UI uh, all around the character. I just played Liza P, amazing game, by the way. Uh, and so I was inspired, wanted to put all that stuff type, uh, type of stuff in, have the character walk out into this, you know, apocalyptic landscape uh, for a little bit. And then it zooms out and then edit all the fake title stuff. It is not coming to PS5, Xbox, and Steam. Not yet. But it was a lot of fun to come up with this concept of a game that I would want to play and try different things and try to see what was possible. Um, you know, the UI, for example, adding that in. Um, I did, you know, these different things. Like there's a little, what, weapon here, a, a, a potion and futuristic knife and all that stuff. This was created also in te uh, text to image and then brought in and composited together. Um, and the really cool thing here is that you can take your character and then bring them into new worlds. So once you have different views of a character, um, I've got my front, I've got my side, I've got my back. You could save this as an image, composite your character into a new world in Photoshop, and then I could have my samurai walking through a futuristic cyberpunk city. Or maybe instead they go to the mountaintops and walk under a Tory gate, for example. Or maybe they're in a mystical forest and there's bioluminescent glowing stuff all around them. Basically, what I did was in Photoshop, uh, took my character uh, and then from that scene where the door is in front of them in this futuristic workshop, right, isolated them just like I did with Little Lammy in one of the very first things I showed, and then put them in different worlds. So here's a cyberpunk city, here's a mountaintop, and here's a mystical forest, and then I let Firefly generate video, do the rest. And so this is a really cool way to take a central character. It doesn't have to, have to be for a video game concept. It may be for any type of storytelling you're trying to do and bring them into different environments. So the final thing that I wanted to share today is kind of the culmination of all of this stuff together. So I tried to take all the stuff I've learned and played around with with Generate Video and then all the existing stuff I already know how to do like Premiere and After Effects and Photoshop and try to combine it all to tell an actual story, right? So um, instead of these one-off experiments, put multiple scenes together, have a consistent character go through, add some music, add some effects, add some titles, and see if I could make something uh, based off of a storyboard that I put together of a little robot that's flying through this futuristic city. So this is called The Delivery. Uh, let's take a watch. So the main way that I created this was rendering out my backgrounds and my character separately. Um, and that gave me just a little bit more control. If I had tried to say, take this robot or composite the picture and then have the robot, you know, dive down or up or go, you know, twirl around this alleyway, um, I didn't have as much control as I wanted. And so instead, uh, what I did was kind of have them as separate elements. So for example, here is a, you know, rendered background that I did um, from Generate Video, uh, kind of flying through this, you know, cyberpunk city. And then over top of that, I overlaid this guy. So I made this character 
in, um, you know, uh, rendered him out in text to image, and then basically did a bunch of green screen variations of him from different angles. So here's an initial one where I just said, you know, slowly rotate around um, to the side. And this is something that I used in a few different scenes, actually scaled him up and moved him around and added a shadow to have him feel like he's moving through the scene. But then that gave me some additional variations where I could, you know, continue to twist to show his back. Here's another one where his eyes are kind of blinking and then he turns around and goes away. I have no idea what was happening here with this little robot arm, but I masked that out anyway. And here's the first scene where it kind of zooms out and goes into the distance uh, towards the city skyline. So having all these different angles of my character allowed me to, you know, uh, have all these elements that I can composite, key out the green screen and then composite it over top of these separate background elements. So here's an alleyway, you know, with some depth of field and it comes to this glowing light and then the character went around that. I, you know, added a shadow and other things in this particular scene to make it feel like uh, the character was actually there. Same thing with the girl character at the end. I started with a text to image beginning and then did a few different scenes with her where she looks down at her sushi at the end and smiles and then this one she's walking away when she goes to get the sushi, um, that sort of stuff. And so again, starting with a text to image, I was able to have a consistent character and then ask them to do different things. Turn around and walk towards the horizon or look down and then look up and smile. And this gave me a lot of variety, um, but also let me worry about my character and how they looked separately from my, from my background and then be able to combine them later. This is the only shot that was completely done in Generate Video where the uh, guy actually opens up and shows the sushi. I basically started with a static screenshot of um, you know the character tilted in a certain way. I rotated him in Photoshop, put him on a windowsill that I generated, and then just said, have the robot open its you know head up basically to reveal a plate of sushi. And that's exactly um, what it did. So everything else was a composite shot, but this one, um, it was easiest to do with Generate Video. There's also a lot of extra uh, atmospheric effects that I added on to help sell it. Uh, so uh, these motion lines, for example, this started as a uh, image that I created and then put into generate video to have the uh, kind of sense of speed and layering that over top of everything helped to make feel like the character is going fast. Um, same thing with these clouds that I used in several ways um, to kind of give a little bit more atmosphere as well as uh, some more dusty air. Actually, I think this is the same one that I used for the animated video. So I reuse this one. So I've got separate layers for my robot, for my motion lines, and for my background. And then all of that stuff can kind of get layered on top and then I can manipulate things. I had to add a mask around this character because you saw there's like rocks that were floating in the green screen. I had to get rid of that. So still a little bit of surgery and uh, you know motion graphics knowledge to get away around. But overall, like this was a really fun project and it was so cool to be able to tell this story. Like a month ago, if you had asked me to sit, to do this, I don't know if I'd been able to do it because um, again, I'm not a 3D modeler. I don't know how to do this stuff. Um, and this allowed me to take this concept, take this idea, take these storyboard scenes and basically put it together. So overall, I'd say each scene took about an hour to make um, from the you know concept and rendering to putting everything together in After Effects, all the compositing. And uh, it was really cool. And it's really opened up a lot of ideas in terms of what other stories I might want to tell in the future. You could see taking this concept and taking it and going even longer with it. Um, and I think we're gonna see more and more people do that in the future. Um, so for me, this unlocks a new way of storytelling that I haven't been able to do before. And it's really exciting to think about you know, what possibilities are out there. All right, so that's it. Uh, I hope that was an entertaining and informative and inspiring look at what might be possible with Firefly Generate Video. It's only gonna get better from here. Uh, this is the worst it's ever gonna be, so it's a really exciting future for sure. Now, I know AI can be kind of a divisive term, right? And right now you're seeing everyone throw AI on everything. And there's good versions, there's bad versions, and there's stuff in between. And that's, you know, anytime a new technology comes out, this sort of stuff's gonna happen. I would definitely recommend checking out Adobe's uh, ethics page for AI. And this is gonna go about their approach, much more detail about their approach to AI-related tools, including where they're sourcing their data from, uh, what they're training their models on, how they are compensating creators, how they're not stealing user data, 
data and how they're doing new things like the content authenticity initiative, which will uh, basically say if things were made by AI tools or not. So I highly recommend checking that out and then making your own personal decision on whether these tools are right for you or not. Uh, but I would love to see what you create with Firefly. So please uh, tag me at OK Samurai in anything you create. I'd love to check it out. And hopefully this was helpful. All right. Thank you so much for watching and have fun.